Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to do a classic reaction, man. Classic rock reaction. Um, this is live at Pompeii. It's uh, Pink Floyd's um, uh, concert in the Open Coliseum in uh, Pompeii. And um, this was back in uh, 71. What I'm doing is I am doing the entire concert series, man, song for song. And um, this particular song, uh, today is called Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. Looking forward to it. All right. Pink Floyd, Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. Let's get it.
The cerebral trips these guys take me on. your impression of the song the first time you heard it, especially if it was back in the day. In the day.
Wow. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. Huh. The cerebral poets of rock, as I call them, they certainly uh, did not fail to disappoint. Man, what a hypnotic trek of a song that was. And um, I'm not even going to try to interpret the meaning and try to uh, glean from from it what uh, all of it represents, man. Um, damn. But that was really, really good. The musicianship is just incredible. I imagine that just being there in that great, great old Roman Colosseum just conjures up this feeling, uh, this atmospheric feeling. And it really adds probably to their performance. Damn, man. Nick Mason's drum work is just uh, fantastic, man. And yeah, I know with the approach of Pink Floyd, approaching the cerebral uh, essence of uh, rock and that sort of thing, you know, of course, Nick will never get a platform to just launch himself uh, like the likes of a John Bonham or um, a Neil Peart. But um, he is uh, a very, very well accomplished musician. You can tell just by the little bits that he does. You know, you only see him um, and uh, his contribution in part. And then it goes to the other members. And, you know, so it's never like he's going to do a drum solo. But, yeah, you know that that is a masterful, skilled musician um, with those sticks, man. Fantastic. Overall, the whole song is great, man. And again, I'm going to have to sit down and do some reading and get an idea of what the hell this song means. Uh, this, I, I had this feeling from the very beginning not to try to follow it. And uh, I know some of you say, um, one of you, <laughs> one of you said to me, uh, it's a fool's errand to actually try to glean meaning out of lyrics. I totally disagree with you on that. But I uh, also get your point. And it applies here. So, um, yeah, man, I'm just going to uh, go and uh, do some reading on my own time and get an idea of what this all means, especially being that I'm going to be doing a whole uh, series, just completing the whole series live at Pompeii. And then, of course, I'm going to go on to doing the um, David Gilmore 2016 uh, live at Pompeii, you know. And uh, let me know about Roger Waters. I, um, I've never seen a Roger Waters um, uh, live uh, um, uh, performance, and so uh, let me know about that. I've only been um, uh, told to check out David Gilmore's, but I've never been told to uh, look into the Roger Waters live performance because I know I know that he performs as well. So let me know about Roger Waters. Um, uh, so as far as I go right now, I'm just going to complete live at Pompeii. And then um, uh, onward to David Gilmore's 2016 Live at Pompeii. And that's going to fill up my Patreon exclusives for pretty much like uh, six months at least. But it isn't just Pink Floyd that I'm going to do on the exclusive, of course. But you're going to see quite a lot of Pink Floyd on the exclusive, mainly because, you know, it's considered to be a, a live performance, right? And of course, I've got to complete the whole damn set. So... Let's uh, do a little background, man. A little research. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, uh, I can't just uh, listen to a, a song, especially a great song like this. Um, feel that it's good and then just move on. I got to know a little bit more. Um, I got a message from um, a YouTube um, reactor and uh, it wasn't a very nice message it was uh, what the hell do you think you're doing who the hell do you think you are you know uh, doing all of this research and Wikipedia and this and this and this and this and this and <laughs> and uh, you know, your format is so different from the rest of everybody. You think you're special or something. So it was like that. And I'm like, who the hell is this person? And uh, I, I checked them out. And um, and the guy's got uh, 
you know, uh, many, many more subscribers than I've got. Been around longer, and uh, so I don't, I don't get it. You know, me in my little corner with my twenty thousand subscribers, and this guy with his many, many more subscribers. Yo, so I, uh, I don't know where the hell that came from, but um, hey, man, you know, when I started this channel. I didn't know what I was doing. I just turned the camera on. That's all I did. And I just started to speak to the damn camera. Um, and the whole idea, uh, well, I knew that um, I wanted to get to know rock and roll. But I, I also knew that, um, you know, it would be a great thing to do a little bit of research while I'm doing it. Because if I'm going to get to know rock and roll, it isn't going to settle in my mind. Um, without me doing a little bit of uh, research and uh, just getting to know uh, the artist more. It isn't just doing a reaction and then turning the camera off after a few minutes. That, sorry, that's just not how I do it, right? Uh, so anyway, man, hey, I just thought I'd share that little bit with you. It's still kind of throwing me off a little bit. I'm kind of like, what the hell? Anyway, enough of that shit. Let's uh, let's get into this. Um, so, I got my Wikipedia page here, man. Uh, open. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. Set the controls for the heart of the sun is a song by the English rock band Pink Floyd. It appeared on their second album, A Saucer Full of Secrets, in '68. It was written by Roger Waters and features a drum part by Nick Mason, played with timpani mallets. The track was planned for release as a single with Scream Thy Last Scream on the 8th of September before it was vetoed by the band's record company EMI. The song was regularly performed between 67 and 73 and can be heard on the live disc of the 69 album Umagama and sees in the 1972 movie Pink Floyd Live at Pompeii. Okay, it's 72. Sorry, I, uh, I was saying it's uh, in 71. The song is one of two songs from A Saucer Full of Secrets that appears on the 2001 compilation album Echoes, The Best of Pink Floyd, and uh, the other being Jug Band Blues, and is the only song recorded by Pink Floyd to feature material from all five band members, as there are several different guitar parts recorded by both David Gilmour and Sid Barrett. Yeah, Sid Barrett, man. I, uh... I did uh, Piper at the Gates, and unfortunately, not only did it get blocked, but I uh, got a copyright strike on that one, man. That was my first copyright strike. That scared the hell out of me the first time it happened, and uh, I immediately uh, pulled all of my Pink Floyds off of YouTube, man. Anyway, um, I'll slowly reintroduce it, and but without... Um, uh, um, sorry, my brain just went blank. Uh, without the Sid Barrett um, album there. Um, anyway, I'm trying to read, I'm trying to do all kinds of different things, so let's just focus on one thing. Yeah, Piper at the Gates, I don't know why my mind just went blank. Lyrics and music. According to an interview with Gilmore in the 2006 documentary, Which One's Pink, the studio version of the song contained minor guitar work, both from Gilmore and Barrett, making Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun the only Pink Floyd song that features all five band members, though some listeners may have not fully discerned the guitar uh, tracks as they largely blend in with Richard Wright's keyboards and organs. Hmm, okay, that warrants another listen. The song's recording commenced in August of 67 with overdubs recorded in October of that year and in January of 68. In an article reprinted in the Bruno MacDonald book, Pink Floyd Through the Eyes of, Waters borrowed the lyrics from a book of Chinese poetry from the Tang Dynasty, which was later identified as the book Poems of the Late Tang, translated by A.C. Grant. Among the borrowed lines from Chinese poetry, as translated by Grant, were those written by uh, Li He, whose poem Don't Go Out of the Door contains the lines Witness the man who raved up the wall as he wrote his questions to heaven. Shang Yin, whose poetry contained the lines, which little by little the night turns around, 
countless the twigs which tremble in the dawn, and one inch of love is one inch of ashes. And Dumu, whose poetry contained the line, lotuses lean on each other in yearning. Wow, man. Roger Waters really uh, did a lot of uh, reading here, did a lot of research, and uh, pulled a lot of sources to create this song. Some serious uh, poetry here. Okay, let's go down to reception. In a negative review for A Saucer Full of Secrets, Rolling Stone's Jim Miller described Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun, along with Let There Be More Light, as boring, melodically, harmonically, and lyrically. Yo. Miller further described the production work as not as glittery as the first albums and the instrumental work is shoddy and routine. Miller also described the track as too long. Hmm. Needless to say, this guy does not get Pink Floyd. Alternative and live versions. Pink Floyd performed the song from 67 to 73. A performance on the 9th of September in 67 featured Barrett and Waters switching guitars. The last ever performance of the song by Pink Floyd took place on the 13th of October in 73 at the Stadthal Vienna during the Dark Side of the Moon tour. Live versions of the song appeared on the 69 Umagama album and the 72 Live at Pompeii music film. During these live performances, the song was significantly extended with a wide range of dynamics, including a white noise middle section. Okay. Yeah, it must have been in the live performances, not so much in the film. Waters performing the track on his The Dark Side of the Moon live tour. Uh, the song has been a staple in Waters' solo tours, beginning with the 84 to 85 tours. Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun was presented in a radically rearranged rendition with female backing vocals, saxophone solos, and a guitar solo, and even a shakuhachi solo in 85. Okay. The song was played by Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets between 2018 and 2019, and during uh, April 18th, 2019 performance in New York City, Roger Waters made an appearance performing lead vocals and gone. Okay, man. Yeah, let's stop there because now it gets into cover versions and oh my God, man, there's like a two, yeah, yeah, almost three dozen different cover versions and different um, uh, artists covering it. So uh, let's just uh, let's just leave it there, man. Um, hey, that was excellent. Uh, in no way whatsoever was I bored. Uh, don't know what this Rolling Stone guy is talking about. Um, but yeah, man, I, I'd like to feel that after a number of um, reactions that I get Pink Floyd. Uh, okay, I'm no near, nowhere near close to um, uh, getting to the end. In fact, you know, I don't even know how many albums Pink Floyd has done. Uh, I got to, um, Dark Side, no, I got to The Wall, uh, uh, many of you told me not to bother with the final cut, um, that's as far as I got, and I believe maybe, was that eight or nine albums, and then after that they, uh, they split. And then um, we take up with uh, Gilmore leading uh, the new Pink Floyd, I guess. And then from there, um, into the 2010s, uh, he started to do his own thing. I believe that's how the whole Pink Floyd uh, progressive storyline, uh, I believe that's how it works. Now, Roger Waters departed in, um, I believe, after The Wall. And I can't remember what year that was. I believe that's how the, the Pink Floyd story goes. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, 
So man, I'm just scrolling down here. That's my reaction. I'm just scrolling down and uh, seeing what notes I got coming uh, going on before I bounce. So this week, what I want to do, man, is continue with my quads. My New Year's resolution is to stay on top of my quads. I want to get back to where I was, um, where when I was um, uh, at least two or three weeks ahead. You know, it, despite being busy and all of that stuff. Yes, I got really busy with my job, and then um, you know, uh, you know, I jumped from. 10,000 subscribers to 20,000 subscribers in four months. So I was like, yo. And uh, because I didn't think about going beyond 10,000 subscribers. I didn't think about what my life would look like beyond 10,000 subscribers. And so um, then, uh, you know, I realized, oh man, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more busy doing different things. So my resolution this year is to be ahead of the game where my complimentary quads are concerned. That's the big one. And then after that, perhaps maybe I can squeeze in some more uh, room for other things. Speaking of other things, a good example of that is my Gone Too Soon series that I started and I've kind of dropped the ball on. But uh, I'm going to be doing a Gone Too Soon for Alan, aka Walking Wounded, very soon. And uh, Alan, I sent you a message, but if you see this before you get your message, I need uh, a few more links. You've only sent me one link, so I need a few more. Uh, I'm going to be doing Centerfield, which is John Fogarty's uh, album. I don't know how many albums John Fogarty did post uh, CCR, but uh, it's been highly recommended. Uh, that I do um, center field so I can kind of get an idea of the growth progression and how he did after CCR. So I'll definitely do that. And uh, it's that time of the month, uh, patrons, my patrons who are uh, silver and higher um, for your recommendations for artist of the month for February. So please, if you can, get that to me as soon as possible. And um, yeah, it uh, speaking of Artist of the Month, CCR has been one of my favorite Artist of the Month uh, covers that I've done. And I really had a great time um, getting to know them. And uh, I find I found it to be fascinating research and read, uh, discovering who they were and their contributions and what they accomplished in such a short, short period of time. Seven albums in four years. I mean, these lads were working it, let me tell you, man. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next uh, artist of the month. And it's February being the coldest month of the year, I made this joke that um, if it's the coldest month of the year, I hope that this artist of the month for February is hot and really sizzles. So um, patrons, get back to me in regards to um, uh, who your recommendation for artist of the month is. And remember, May is Bob Dylan month. So don't even bother sending me any recommendations for May because Bob Dylan, that's just his month, right? Uh, and that's my notes, man. I'm going to jump on more quads, like I said, and uh, I'm going to wait to hear from Alan and uh, get more links for his gone too soon. I'm not going to go ahead and source any links out because I did that once and boy, did I ever get some attitude. No gratitude, just attitude. So I am not um, sourcing links out myself. You send me the links and then I'll um, I'll take it from there. So man, what else? Uh, that's it, man. Great, great song, fantastic band. These guys were at the peak of their creativity back in 72. Uh, not just 72, but this film is a fantastic, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a microscope looking into their life. And I really, really dig that idea of them just playing to an open arena. And I'm just visualizing all of the great gladiators of old that fought in that arena, of the great heavenly hosts that are probably thankful, hey man, these guys are uh, paying tribute to us. They have not forgotten us. They know that there is something out there um, more than just themselves alone and they're giving us our due. So that's really, really cool. That's kind of like how I visualize um, the whole uh, live at Pompeii kind of setting. Whenever I see some of the footage and I see this big open uh, Colosseum, that's what I'm visualizing. Anyway, man, hey, 
That was excellent. I'm looking forward to doing uh, another installment. I'll try my best to keep them a, a little bit more tight and not so spread out. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing the whole series. So send me your recommendations, patrons, for, um, uh, you know, live uh, performances, patron exclusives, and I'll definitely jump on them. And like I said, it doesn't have to be Pink Floyd, but I'm going to be doing quite a lot of Pink Floyd on the exclusives. All right. So have a good day and I'll see you in my next patron exclusive. Peace.